Can Raptor 3 finally achieve full flow efficiency without melting itself? That's the question that's been haunting SpaceX engineers, and quite frankly, every rocket enthusiast, for years. Because if Raptor 3 succeeds, it doesn't just make Starship better, it changes the future of space travel. Let's start with this. SpaceX's Raptor engine is the most ambitious rocket engine ever built. No exaggeration. While every other engine on Earth burns fuel and oxidizer separately, Raptor goes all in, a full-flow staged combustion cycle. Both the methane and oxygen are pre-burned and fed into the chamber under insane pressure, creating a supercharged explosion that pushes performance to the edge of physics. The reward? Unmatched efficiency. The risk? Meltdown. Literally. And this isn't theory. Early raptors actually melted themselves during test fires. The pressures and temperatures were so extreme that no metal could survive long enough for repeated flights. Elon Musk himself once said, the hardest part isn't making it fire once, it's making it fire a thousand times. So what changed with Raptor 3? Well, let's rewind a bit. Raptor 1 was a proof of concept, a messy, pipe-covered, Frankenstein-like engine that showed what was possible. Raptor 2 cleaned up the design, simplified the plumbing, and gave Starship its real muscle, about 230 tons of thrust per engine. But it still wasn't perfect. During the first few Starship flights, engines blew out mid-flight, turbo pumps overheated, and full-flow combustion was still too unpredictable. Enter Raptor 3, SpaceX's most advanced and aggressive version yet. This isn't just a tweak, it's a near total redesign. The thrust jumped from 230 to nearly 269 tons. The chamber pressure? Over 330 bar. That's three times higher than what the Space Shuttle main engine ever achieved. To put that in perspective, inside that small metal chamber, pressure builds greater than the deepest parts of Earth's ocean. So how do you keep something like that from tearing itself apart? That's the billion dollar question. SpaceX engineers had to completely rethink cooling. The walls of the Raptor engine are laced with hundreds of tiny channels where subcooled methane flows before combustion. It's a genius trick, using your own fuel as a coolant. But it's also like trying to keep ice from melting inside a volcano. The earlier versions struggled. The regenerative cooling wasn't efficient enough, causing hot spots that damaged the chamber. With Raptor 3, they've redesigned the cooling network, improved the metal alloys, and adjusted the injector geometry to create a more even burn. In short, they're teaching fire how to behave. And that's what makes this engine so fascinating. The full flow part means both fuel and oxidizer are pre-burned creating two separate streams of hot gas that spin the turbo pumps before entering the chamber. The advantage? You extract every last drop of energy. The disadvantage? Every single part of that system runs red hot at incredible pressure. One weak weld, one unstable oscillation, and the whole engine becomes scrap metal. Now here's the cliffhanger. Why does this even matter? Why push so hard? Because if SpaceX gets this right, Starship doesn't just become a big rocket, it becomes the first truly reusable interplanetary launch system. Think about it, every Raptor that survives multiple flights means cheaper missions, faster turnarounds, and less maintenance. That's the key to Mars. You can't colonize another planet with disposable engines. And this isn't just about heat and metal, it's about iteration. SpaceX is now producing Raptors at a scale no one's ever attempted before. They're literally building and testing engines daily at their McGregor facility. Failures aren't setbacks, they're data points. Each explosion, each meltdown, each burnt nozzle teaches them something new. That's why when you see Starship Flight 11 preparing for launch, it's not just another rocket test. It's a live demonstration of engineering evolution. Every burn, every second of thrust, every controlled shutdown, it's all proof that Raptor 3 is inching closer to perfection. Here's where things get really interesting. Raptor 3 isn't just about power, it's about efficiency and reliability. The goal is to make the engine robust enough for rapid reuse. Think about an airplane engine that flies, lands, and flies again the next day. 
That's the future Musk envisions for Starship, a fully reusable system that can launch hundreds of times without rebuilding engines from scratch. And the numbers are starting to back add up. Raptor 3's specific impulse, or ISP, is creeping toward 380 seconds in a vacuum. That's edging close to the theoretical limit from methane-based engines. The chamber runs cleaner, the thrust curve is smoother, and the ignition reliability is higher. Every metric shows it's the closest SpaceX has come to true full-flow efficiency. But of course the question still stands. Can it do that without melting itself? The truth is, we won't fully know until Starship starts flying regularly. Static fires can simulate heat and pressure, but there's nothing like the chaos of a full orbital launch. The vibrations, the g-forces, the shifting loads, all of it pushes the engine to its absolute limit. And that's exactly what SpaceX wants, because every limit reached is another wall broken. Let's talk payoff. Imagine a starship with 33 Raptor 3 engines firing perfectly, landing flawlessly, refueling, and launching again within days. That's when you start turning rockets into transport vehicles, not one-time experiments. That's when Mars missions become not only possible, but practical. That's the vision behind all this madness. Elon Musk's bet has always been that rapid innovation beats perfection. Fail fast, learn faster. That's why Raptor 3 exists. It's not the final version, it's the next step toward an engine that can withstand the violence of space travel over and over again. So what's next? Starship Flight 11 will tell us a lot. The engines will face new stress tests, longer burns, and maybe, if all goes well, a full-scale demonstration of how far Raptor 3 can go without self-destruction. If it survives, it's not just a win for SpaceX, it's a historic leap for all of spaceflight, because never before has humanity come this close to mastering a full-flow, staged combustion engine at scale. And that's why this story isn't about metal and fire. It's about persistence. It's about human ingenuity versus physics. About engineers who stare at melting engines and say, let's build another. So can Raptor 3 finally achieve full flow efficiency without melting itself? Maybe not today, but every second it burns, we get closer to the day when it can. And when that happens, when Raptor 3 roars at full power and lives to fire again, that'll be the day humanity takes another real step toward Mars. Because in the end, progress isn't born in perfection, it's forged in flame. And SpaceX? They're the ones holding the torch.